This week's video is brought to you by Sundance Now. Both of these comic book movies were released in 2010 and were directed by a director who went on to direct a Marvel movie. Matthew Vaughn directed X-Men The First Class and James Gunn went on to direct Guardians of the Galaxy. Also, another fun fact is that both of these movies star a character from season 9 of The Office. This movie is about a group of superheroes with no superpowers. When his wife becomes addicted to drugs, a man decides to say no to crime. The hero without powers recruits a young girl to fight by his side and together, they kill the bad guy's henchmen off one by one. It's real inspirational because origin stories in comic book movies usually makes it feel like you have to have dead parents in order to become a superhero. So it sucks for the kids whose parents are still alive. This movie tells you there's more than one way to become a hero. The main character in the movie is the biggest loser, like the show on NBC. He spends his morning, noons, and nights watching awkward porn alone in his house. When he's not doing that, you can find him chilling at the local comic book store learning about his favorite comic book characters. One day at the comic book store, him and his friends have an interesting discussion and wonder why so many millionaires have had dead parents in the real world, but for some reason, the real world has yet to receive a real superhero. It's mind boggling. How come nobody's ever tried to be a superhero? I mean, I wonder all the time why no one's ever just stood up and become a real superhero. Then one day he forgets how to mind his business and stands up to some gangsters. The bad news is he gets embarrassed. The good news is he vows to never let it happen again. But as for more bad news, he lets it happen one more time after that. But more good news is the third time's a charm. He reaches his tipping point and after some intensive reconstructive surgery, he's a new man. He puts on some boots and some dry fit clothes and fills out a job application to become a crime fighter. He believes in liberty and justice for all, but when he first starts crime fighting, it looks like he's racist and only fights crime in black neighborhoods. But trust me, he's not racist and is probably only fighting bad guys from darkest to lightest or something. Because his diversity targets are eventually reached before the end of the montage. He gets super popular and his story ends up on every local news station. A hero's identity is supposed to be kept a secret so their personal lives aren't put in danger. It's way too easy to find the heroes in the movie and that's a problem. A police officer finds one of the heroes address with barely doing any research and the girl finds out his identity in the bedroom scene so there's no point in having a secret identity if it's not a secret a wise man once said with great power comes great responsibility but luckily the crime fighters in this movie have no power so you could argue with no power comes no responsibility the hero decides to quit crime fighting for good the bad guys still want him dead though the gangsters think they found him and shoot him. Unfortunately for them, they shot the wrong guy. That's not him, you guys. The good guy unretires, and that same day, he gets into it with the bad guys. He runs for his life, but he's captured. The bad guys start beating him down, and luckily, the girl hero steps in and saves his life. After that, they drive the rag car back to their secret hideout. It's here where they decide to become partners and defeat the drug lord. To fight fire with fire, they pack as much guns as they can carry. And one of the teammates spends time reading a manual on how to use their secret weapon. You better start reading the instructions because you're gonna be using it in about five minutes. When they arrive to the drug lord's house, there's a gunman on every corner. The mission looks impossible, but it's not. To get past the gunman, the hero acts like a little girl to distract the guard. You're a jerk. I lost my mommy and daddy. After that, the girl starts killing everybody. Me personally, as a father of three daughters, I used to tell my baby girls they could be whatever they wanted to be in life. However, after watching this movie, I now tell them they could be anything except superheroes. When any one of them gives me any lip, I just show them this scene where the girl hero in the movie got shot and they get real quiet all of a sudden. After most of the gunmen are killed, the leader of the bad guys start to panic and forces his right hand man bodyguard to go out there and kill the hero himself. It looks like the last few henchmen have the good guys right where they want them, but the hero sneaks up on them through the window and starts to shoot the whole place up like but da 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 but da da but da da that that that. The drug lord gets what he deserves and suffers multiple stab wounds and eventually dies to death. At the end, the hero walks away uninjured but has to carry his teammate into the sunset because she's physically unable to walk on her own at that point. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so. If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. Hey fellow movie buffs, for me, the toughest part of the year is waiting for summer blockbuster movie season to begin. Thanks to Sundance Now, time flies with their binge-worthy content at your fingertips. All the content on Sundance Now are award-winning films, documentaries, and TV series. So you don't have to waste time finding something good to watch because everything is good to watch, unlike other streaming services. The good news is, when you sign up using this link, you get a 30-day free trial so you could test it out and find out they're the real deal. Click the link in the description and start your free trial with Sundance Now today.